Hi guys, welcome to ITTV. I am Mr. Wong, your English teacher. In today's lesson, we're going to look at formal letters. Now, formal letters are very important. Now, in everyday life, we use formal letters all the time. Do you know the bills that come to your house? The bills that come to your house have a particular format. Now, when you write a letter, for example, to the government, it will have to be a formal letter. There will be a format for you to follow. And today, we're going to look at that format and we're going to make sure that we are very clear about how to write a formal letter. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to know when to write a formal letter and when to write an informal letter. <laughs> So let's look at an informal letter first. I want to write to my best friend who has moved to another state. Now, this is definitely an informal letter because it is a letter written to a friend. Now, on the other hand, if you wanted to write to the government, now, the government would be an authoritative figure and therefore, when you write, it would have to be a formal letter. So let's look at different situations where you would need to write a formal letter. First, let's look at this picture. We have a man and he is looking at a newspaper. And we can see the word careers written on it. Looking for a job, you need to write a letter. Now, when you are looking for a job, you will have to write a letter. What sort of a letter? A formal letter. Now, let's look at another example. Here, we see a picture of a road with so many potholes. Your street is full of potholes and it has not been retarded for a long time. You definitely need to write a letter to the local council. So here, your letter will be addressed to the local council. Therefore, you need to write a formal letter and you will tell them about these potholes and how you want them to be repaired. Here is another example. Here we have a mother and a son, and you can see that the mother is very angry. Now, if you look at the son's face, you will see that he has been hurt. Now, what do you think happened? You are angry that your son has been bullied by several boys. Then, write a formal letter to the principal. So now, the mother wants to write a letter to complain about the fact that her son has been bullied and she's going to write to the principal. Now, what is the relationship between the mother and the principal? Now, they're not friends, so it is a formal relationship. She will therefore have to write a formal letter. So these are some situations where you will need to write a formal letter. Now, it is important that we know the correct way to write a formal letter. And by the end of the day, you will. Formal letter writing. Application letter, letter to editor, letter to the school principal. Now, these are some examples of when you will know that you need to write a formal letter. Now, for us, a formal letter will be written during our exams. Now, these are some examples that normally come out during exams. So it's good to practice these over and over again. So now let's look at the format. Now, here's a very simple way of looking at it. Right on the top, you have the address of sender. Now, below that, you have this long line. Now, this line isn't there just to separate. It is part of the format. So you need to have that line there. Then, you have name of receiver and address of receiver. Now, next to this address of receiver, you have the date on the right. So let's look at this whole thing again. Address of sender right at the top on the left-hand side. You have a line. Below the line, you have the name of receiver. You then have the address of receiver. Now, right at the bottom of that address, on the right-hand side, your date needs to be in line. So this is the beginning of the format. 
So you need to remember these things because if you can write this properly, remember the format and fill this up, all of this will add to your total mark. Then we move on. Dear Sir, Madam. Now, sometimes you're writing to a manager. You don't know whether this person is a boy or a girl, male or female. You therefore can just write, Dear Sir, Madam. So if you're writing to a principal and you're not sure whether this principal is male or female, you do the same thing. However, if you know that the headmaster is a man, then you can straight away write to Dear Sir or Dear Mr. Lee, Dear Mr. Ahmad. So you can straight away write the name. Then you have the topic. Now, the topic would be what you are writing about. For example, if you are writing a letter to get a job, a job application letter, therefore you will write application for manager's position. As simple as that. That is your topic. And with that, you're done. Now here's something that is important. Now you see this line next to the topic? You must always remember to underline your topic. You will then move into your introduction. Now your topic is very important for your introduction. I refer to the above matter. That is your introduction. That is your first paragraph. Isn't that easy? So you have your topic. Make sure your topic is underlined. And as you begin your first paragraph, all you need to do is to remember those few words. I refer to the above matter. Now these six words are your first paragraph. And there you have it. Your introduction is done. Let's move on. Second paragraph. You introduce yourself. State what post you are applying for. So, you introduce yourself. My name is... Tell them about yourself. Introduce yourself. And then, talk about the topic again. I am applying for... So we're talking about what we are applying for. So you see, in a formal letter, it's actually very easy. Everything just moves along. We then move on to the third paragraph. State your qualifications. Now, it is very important to always state your qualifications because you need to be qualified for this job. Now, when you apply for a job, now in that job advertisement, you will have requirements. So there'll be certain requirements that you need to fill. So as you go through those requirements, so this will be your guideline to how to write your qualifications. Now, when you start looking for a real job, you will of course need to write about yourself. But when you are writing for an exam, look at the advertisement, look at those requirements, and then you just turn it around and you write them in your qualification. Fourth paragraph, any outstanding achievements related to the job you're applying for. Now, whenever you apply for a job, it's good to tell them about yourself. So if you were very active in school, you would like to tell them about it. I was the captain of the basketball team. I was the captain of the swim team. So you're telling them about your achievements. So not only are you qualified based on your education, you're also an all-rounder, which means that when it comes to sports or maybe art, you're also very good there. Fifth paragraph, state what documents that you are enclosing together with the letter. Now, in this fifth paragraph, it is important to tell them if you've added anything else in your envelope. So for example, whatever certs you're putting in, you write it down. I am enclosing my certificates. I am also enclosing photostated copies of all of my degrees for example. So then, when I read the letter, I will then take the envelope and know, okay, there are some more things inside that I need to look at. Six, state your hope, availability of time for interview, and things like that. Now, finally, state your hope. I hope that we will be able to meet soon. Now, to make it more formal, whenever you write a letter, uh, to apply for a job, you'll be writing to the HR department, the Human Resource Department. So you can say something like, I hope to meet with your 
human resource department in the near future. So you can say something like that. Now you need to tell them when you are available. Now a good way to end would be, I am available at your convenience. So you don't have to put a time or date, you just tell them whenever they want you there to give you a call and you would go. Now, sometimes in the job advertisement, they will ask you to include things like your current salary if you are already working and your expected salary. So you can also add this towards the end. I am currently getting 1,500 ringgit. I am expecting to get 1,700 ringgit. So this would be an example. Finally, thank you, space, yours truly, your signature, and this is important, your full name in capital letters. Now again, this comes back to format. So you see the ending is very simple. There are just a few things to remember and you've covered the format. Now let's look at this in detail. Now let's look at this. The manager, the human resource manager. Now, these are two examples of the people you would be writing to if you were writing a job application letter. Now, if I wasn't writing a job application letter, let's say I was writing a letter to a school and I was writing to the principal, then the people you would be writing to would be the headmaster, the principal. So these are some examples of the people you would be writing to. Now, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go step by step and we're gonna look at the format to writing a formal letter. Here we have 30, Jalan Batu Api, Taman Hutan Bakar, 47300 Kelana Jaya, Petaling Jaya. Now, here we have an address. It is right on the top. It is on the left-hand side. So this is the sender's address. So this would be your address because you are writing. So this is the format. And if you look carefully, you would see that it is on the left-hand side, it's on the top, and it's all nicely in line. Now what happens next? One proper name in one line. So here we have 30 Jalan Batu Api. So you see, I stop, I put the comma. I don't add it into one long line. Don't forget the comma. So this is important. Don't forget your commas. You could lose marks if you do. One straight line. So when we look at this address, we can already see different things. The first thing you must remember, one proper name in one line. Don't forget the comma, and remember, everything is in a straight line. Now, after you've written this address, remember, you have to draw a line. So I'm just gonna jump to the next part of the letter. The human resource department. So this would be the department I am writing to. So let's just say I did not know about the manager. I did not know whether I'm writing to the manager of the human resource department. I'll just put to the human resource department. Then, Donald Food Services Sindrian Berhad. So this is the company's name. So once I have the company's name, I will then write the address. So we then have the address, Wisma Dominoes, number four, Jalan Contractor, U1 slash 14, section U1, Highcom Glen Mary Industrial Park, 40150, Sha'alam, Selangor. Usually, in the advertisement, the name of the receiver and the address is given at the bottom. So let's just say you were now doing an exam paper. Go back to the advertisement. So go back to the question. So look at the question. You will find the name in the advertisement. Next, underline the last line of the address. So here we have 40150 Sha'alam. So we have the postcode. Next to the postcode, we have Sha'alam. So if it was Salango, so we underline it. Next, we have the date. Now, if you look closely, you will see that the date is on the right side and it's in line with the last line of the address. Now this is format, so you need to remember it. The last line of the address and the date, they are always in one straight line. Now the way you write your date is also very important. Now let's look at some examples. 
to May. Now you see May, M is capital, A-Y is not. 2010, this is wrong. 2 slash 5 slash 2010, this is also wrong. 2 May, now M-A-Y, all capital, 2010. Now this is the correct way to write an address. So remember this, because this is format and this is all part of the marks that you need. Okay, now we go into the actual letter. Dear Sir slash Madam, remember, we don't know whether it's a male or a female who will be reading this, so Sir slash Madam, easy. Application for the post of Assistant Manager. So straight away we have the topic. We have application of the post and straight away we underline everything. We then go into our introduction, which is so easy in a formal letter. Dear Sir slash Madam. So here is how we begin. We then have the topic. Application for the post of assistant manager underlined. So this is your topic. So you write your topic and you make sure you underline it. Now this topic is important for your introduction. I refer to the above matter. Finished. First paragraph done with those few words. So remember your topic underlined and then you have, I refer to the above matter, and you are done with your first paragraph. So let's look at the second paragraph. In the second paragraph, you begin by introducing yourself. My name is, so you introduce yourself. Where are you from? Secondly, state the posts you are applying for. This is already in the topic, but we do it again. So you start by introducing yourself, then state, I'm applying for what position? And finally, you will tell them, where did you see the advertisement? So for example, if you saw the advertisement in a newspaper, you would say, I saw your advertisement in the Star, and then you say the date, on the 27th of August, 2010. So we wrap it up like that. So your second paragraph is done. So let's move on to the third paragraph. In the third paragraph, you state your qualifications, academic, than working experience. Now, when you are sitting in an exam, look at the advertisement. For example, if you are applying for a job that requires 10 years experience, when you write, don't say I have no experience. You pretend to be writing for a person who has many years of experience. But of course, in reality, when you actually apply for jobs, you have to tell the truth. But in an exam, a lot of it is what you can think of you know, your own imagination. So therefore, if they want experience, you tell them your experience. So you start with your qualifications. I went to, for example, SMK, Tunku Abdul Rahman. I got nine A's in SPM. I then went to University Malaya. Okay, how did you do? What did you study? Tell them these things. And finally, you then move into your work experience. I then started work in the Proton Company. I was working there for five years. What did you do during this time? So all of these are things that you can put in this paragraph. Let's move on to the next paragraph. Paragraph 4. Now in paragraph 4, all you need to do is state what documents are you enclosing together with the application. Now, what documents would you enclose? Now, first of all, you would enclose all the certificates you have of your accomplishments. You will also include your degree or diploma. So these are documents that your future potential employer will want to look at. So state what documents are in there so when they read your letter, they will know what to look for. Let's move on to the next paragraph. Now, paragraph five is basically your closing. So state your hope your availability of time for interview. So as you close, state your hope. I hope to be able to meet with your HR department in the near future. Simple. Also include your availability of time. I'm available at your convenience. Now, this would mean that you can call you anytime. So this is how you finish up and you end paragraph five. And your closing is very, very easy. You begin with a thank you. Once you've written thank you, all you need to do next is yours truly, 
your signature and your full name in capital letters. And with that, you have finished writing your formal letter. So writing a formal letter is not difficult. You just need to remember the format and you will do very, very well. So guys, that's all the time we have for today. Till I see you next time. Bye-bye.